this is not an investment strategy. I just got off the phone uh, with a with a cool individual that had seen a few of my videos online and was interested in buying a private jet as an investment strategy. So I want to talk to you today about why buying a private jet is not an investment strategy. So I do work with individuals that do buy private jets, they lease them back to charter operators, and they generate revenue. But I want to go through some of the numbers on this first, so that we all have kind of the, so that we all have the the idea of how they could and how they might not make money, just so that you're fully informed in order to make a decision. So let's uh, take a look over here. These are going to be some just basic numbers, round numbers, and this is kind of what we're looking at. So if we're looking at a given jet, let's just say a given jet like a mid-size you know citation XL or an XLS okay so if we start here we have a direct operating cost a DOC of three thousand dollars an hour so these are the costs of tailpipe costs fuel you know just to run the thing it's three thousand dollars an hour well typically the charter company will retail that out. And let's say they're ambitious and they retail it out for $5,000 an hour. That gives us a $2,000 per hour gross revenue. Okay. Now, let's, for the sake of this, we're going to go do this based on 25 hours per month. Okay. So that would be a total of 300 hours a year, which is conservative, okay? So 300 hours a year, 25 hours a month, there's $2,000 of profit. So 2,000 times 25 hours is gonna equal a total of 50K per month in gross revenue. So 25 hours per month times 2,000 equals 50K. I appreciate you checking out this video. Before I continue, I want you to go to theultimatejetguide.com where I've put together a full guide for jet buyers like yourself. Now, out of this monthly gross revenue, we need to take a look at, well, what are our expenses? So. Let's start expensing. So let's do a management fee. So let's say on the low end, we're going to get charged uh, $3,000 for management fee. Uh, let's say insurance costs $24,000 for the year. So divide that by 12, 2K for insurance. Let's say the hangers, 2K. Okay. The other thing I meant to, I forgot to mention is usually you're going to want to put at least 60% of your gross into maintenance. So 50,000 times 0. 0.6 is 30,000, 30 K that's for maintenance reserves. And so let's just stop here for a second. So we're at 50K minus three, two, five, seven, thirty-seven thousand dollars. This brings us to a 13K net revenue. Now there's some things that aren't in here, you know, uh, pilot training. If you're gonna divvy that, let's say it costs twenty thousand to thirty thousand dollars. Let's say it costs $24,000 for the pilot training, the type rating. Divide that by two, that's another two grand per month. So $24,000 for the year, divide that by 12. Now we're at another $2,000, so now we're down to $11,000. Uh, we talked about insurance, hangar, you know, and some of these numbers might be low. But let's just say, you know, in this world, we have a $13,000 net revenue. Now, what can you do with that? Well, you can pocket it. And you made thirteen thousand dollars in a month, okay? Um, or maybe you want to go flying with it. Well, if the DOC is three thousand, 
we take 13k, divide that by 3,000, and that's going to give us roughly four hours, right? And we're going to get four, four plus hours of flight time. So if you're only using it once a month, well, great, there's your, there's your free flight, okay? But you haven't made any money. And so the moral of the story is this is not an investment strategy. Okay, the reason that you would make this play is because you have a need for private travel. Okay, because in doing so, you can buy an asset, take the write off, use it for, you know, anywhere for as little as four hours a month, you know, that's 24 hours in the year, you know, up to however much you want. And then you're only going to pay your operating costs and your fixed costs, like your maintenance, like your insurance, like your hangar. Maintenance is not a fixed cost technically, but you're putting 60% of your revenue aside for maintenance. And that revenue is coming from other people. So I guess you could look at it this way. Do you have a tax write-off? Do you, do you need a tax play? Do you have a need for private travel? And do you mind allowing other people to use your private asset? Okay, when they use your asset, that means stuff can break and it's not your fault. It's somebody else's fault. Are you okay with that? That means that while you use the jet more and maintenance costs will go up and the depre and the, the, the value of your asset of your aircraft will go down. The more you use it, the value of it will go down. Okay. So if you're okay with that, this could be a play for you and you can offset your fixed costs. You can offset some of your own flight time. The numbers will work and we, we, we will connect with different operators and they will show you what's, uh, you know, how their business plan works. That could be a play. But if you're looking for an investment, don't do this. Okay. Go invest in real estate, go invest in stocks, go invest in businesses. Okay. This is a play for individuals who have a need for AV for, for private travel. They don't mind using a depreciating asset. They have it. They need a tax play. And maybe you just find it intriguing, right? Like maybe this is just like, oh my gosh, like I'd love to have a jet and, ha and have my, my, my cost taken care of. Then it's a play by all means. And, and here's the, here's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is you want to be connected with a good operator because a good operator will allow you to, to see the numbers correctly. And so we've got operators that deal with different platforms from light jets to mid jets to heavy jets, ultra, ultra long range jets. So depending on your mission, remember, how do you do your mission? How far are you going? How many people are you taking with you? How big of a cabin do you want? And how many stops do you mind taking? Okay. That'll determine the body. And then we'll, we'll, I will connect you with operators in that category. And then those operators will show you their business plan. And they might say, we can do more than 25 hours a month. Great. That's more revenue for us. So let's say, let's see what happens if we double this. All right. So now if we double and go to 50 hours, let's see how this works. So 2000. So now we're going to be at hundred K revenue. And our fixed costs are gonna stay the same. So we'll put 60K aside for maintenance. And then our fixed costs of $7,000 are gonna stay the same, so that's good. So now we've got 100K minus 67. So now we've got $33,000 to play with. So 33,000 divided by $3,000 per hour. That's 11 hours of flight time. All right. Now you got two trips because they were able to fly it more. So, you know, that's kind of how it breaks down. I, like I said, I just got off the phone with somebody and I wanted to explain this, you know, in, in, in further detail why you shouldn't do this. But if you still think it's a good idea, I can help you do it the right way. So connect with me, go to the ultimate Let's schedule a call. Let's, let's go through this, answer any questions that you have based on these models. Then let's get you 
in touch with an operator. Let's find the right operator. Happy to answer all your questions. I will connect you with an operator. We will find you the right aircraft. We'll get it on the certificate and we'll get you up and flying, enjoying the view from the sky so that you can live your jet life to the fullest. Don't forget to go check out over here. I've got a playlist with other operators that uh, will explain everything that, that you need to know on this. So uh, I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.